Hi, my name is Stephen Higgins. John Long and I founded Digzog, and a few short months ago, we introduced our first product, CubeFox. Today, we're going to chat a bit about telemetry and the instrumentation of Kubernetes clusters and talk about a recent enhancement to CubeFox that we think can help. We'll start by walking through the basic challenges of instrumentation in Kubernetes. In Kubernetes. Then we'll contrast the needs in production and dev environments. We'll talk about the needle in a haystack dilemma. Don't worry, I'll explain. And we'll walk through the CubeFox Quick Start, newly augmented for tracing. Let's jump in. The products available today are incredibly sophisticated and capable. Please don't infer from anything I say that I'm implying that they're not necessary. They absolutely are. But I will submit that in development, our needs are different and that possibly we can address engineering requirements without burdening our teams with excessive bureaucracy and oppressive overhead. What we'd like to see are logs, traces, and metrics grouped into meaningful spans. What was happening in a particular component, for instance, when something went wrong? What did the traces look like? What were the metrics? That's closely related to the next point, the fact that so much information is available means that distilling it into something meaningful and actionable has resulted in a focused role, SysOps, evolving to manage this arena. It's not easy to determine what needs to be monitored and how, and the consequence is a bevy of information we need to parse to glean that meaningful and actionable intelligence. Deciding what to instrument, how, and what actions to take and by whom is a full-time job. We end up with a bit of a dilemma. One problem that occurs is the sheer volume of information generated. I remember looking at SNMP variables early on for personal computers, thinking, well, it's wonderful that I can look at a thousand attributes for this or that hardware device. How do I decide what to monitor, measure, visualize, etc.? The sheer volume of data available is daunting. It's not necessarily helpful to pump out reams of data because it puts the data consumer in the position of trying to slice, dice, and filter it into something that is meaningful and useful. The situation is complicated further by the fact that the requirements for instrumentation are really not the same in dev as they are in production. Production has extensive instrumentation requirements, of course. I won't delve too deeply into it here. But there are many things that we need to know in addition to what a developer would want to see from a production standpoint. We need to understand performance at both a macro and micro level. Outages could be brick and mortar things like cloud provider issue, or they could be a particular application or application running in a particular environment, for instance, UAT. Or there could be a specific customer running a slightly different application version. We need to detect any potential attacks and decide what to do about them. And we want to monitor things like authentication and authorization. And while we're doing so, we want to retain audit records and track things like backup and recovery. As you know, there's so much more. This is a very cursory list, but even a cursory list gives one pause insofar as to how these requirements will be addressed. In engineering, we're really focused on the behavior of the application. If I make a change, what is the impact of that change? Can I walk through the call paths either to ensure they're correct or to understand a problem? I'd like to be able to drill into different spans for different versions. Of course, this would entail the ability to be able to seamlessly run different versions of the software simultaneously. By the way, that's a QFOX capability. And I'd like the primitives automatically correlated. It's a big requirement. A big requirement would be to do all of this without any bureaucratic hurdles or coordination with other teams. Just develop the app and the telemetry is available right then and there. Wouldn't the holy grail be to be able to dynamically trigger debug level traces and logs without doing anything to the application or changing instrumentation configuration in any way? particularly globally, and to see all of the information associated with a component in a single pane of glass and see the code that was responsible. 
We're not there yet, by the way. The thing, these are the things about which we're thinking. What do teams want? Simply put, teams want to innovate without friction. They want to prototype rapidly, compare versions for functional and behavioral differences, easily test, and do so without worrying about provisioning. Low friction also extends to an absence of bureaucracy, being able to quickly get things up and running and make changes. For instance, modify any app component, switch data stores, trace an individual component, iteratively redeploy and test, etc. And they want to be able to do all of this without DevOps or SysOps involvement. The idea would be independent sandboxes for every team and even for individual developers. Sandboxes that could be stood up, torn down, and run side by side to compare and contrast. Stood up, torn down, and run by those individual teams and developers. And where no analysis or other team involvement was necessary to wire components together where telemetry was available without any configuration whatsoever. The key point is that developers want to focus on the application, not security, not telemetry, not coordination with other teams or bureaucratic hurdles. Early on, when we contemplated how KubeFox could help, we thought about what developers and QA engineers would want. Ideally, they'd want to look at applications and see information organized by spans. So they'd be able to see the behavior of an app's components on a component by component basis, to see log messages organized by spans and similarly for metrics. It seems pretty straightforward, but candidly, we're not the first ones to contemplate this, but organizing the system in that fashion today is a non-trivial exercise, frequently requiring the efforts of multiple teams. We're not claiming that organizing information by spans is in any way novel. What we're doing instead is that we're building that from scratch without engineering teams being required to do anything, meaning that by virtue of the fact of them developing an application using KubeFox, they get tracing, span-based tracing for free. I'm gonna go walk through our quick start now with a telemetry twist. So I'm cheating a little bit here. I'm not gonna go through all the quick start today in detail. We do have a prior webinar that walks through the quick start and also a webinar and corresponding tutorial for KubeFox with Asura. You can find the KubeFox and KubeFox plus Asura tutorial on, on our docs page. We're on our docs page right now for the quick start. I jumped ahead a little bit in the quick start because A, I don't want you to have to sit through the additional extra steps in the time they take. B, I'll be augmenting the quick starts soon or maybe adding an additional page to include the tele telemetry flavor. And C, it's late and CNCF wants me to turn in the webinar. And that's one of the biggest reasons of all. What I've done so far then, I've created the cluster. I installed the KubeFox Helm chart. It's, a little, it's slightly different than what you see here on the Quick start page. The big difference is just adding this one line set telemetry dot enabled equal true, which is right after the create namespace in this case. Um, and I installed the latest Fox CLI tool and I performed the init, the basic init for the quick start. Sorry for my little pregnant pause there. Additionally, I opened an additional terminal to start a local proxy with the Fox CLI that's running here. That's something that you see right there. I've opened another terminal port to set up port forwarding for Jaeger. And I've opened a browser tab that points to to the Jaeger port so that we can visualize the traces. As you can see, we don't have any data yet. So let's go through our KubeFox stuff. First, we're gonna apply 
are environments and virtual environments. So we have two. We have prod, which has an environment variable, who, which is defined as universe, and it has a subpath of prod, pretty straightforward. And similarly, we have QA, where who is defined as world. You can see who here. So for prod, it's universe. For QA, it's world. And QA is a subpath of QA. The subpath is provided on the URL and matched by Kubefox to route the request appropriately. Kubefox has the ability to run multiple versions of the same application in the same or a different VE. It will distill deployments to control provisioning. For example, if we have multiple front ends using the same back end, only the unique front end pods will be deployed. You'll actually see that in a moment. I'll get this back at the top. Now we'll do a uh, publish our app. Our app has two components. And I'm a bad boy. I've done this a couple times now because I screwed up. Um, and because I've done it a couple times, it's skipping the build. And this is uh, a capability that Kubefox provides. When it sees that something has already been built, it's going to go use that uh, component as it was because nothing has changed. Qfox works from the repository outward. So it actually goes and looks at the repository and says, hey, you know what? The, the front end didn't change from the last build and the back end didn't change from the last build. Usually if, if uh, I wiped out those images, what you'd see is those images would be built this time. But we're going to make a modification to the front end later, and it would not, it doesn't redeploy the back end. You'll actually, it, that's actually what's going to happen, even though this time it's skipped. When we make the modification to the front end um, in a moment, the front end will have changed. It's going to have to rebuild that and deploy it, but it's going to skip the back end. Let's take a look at our pods and see what it's running. So we have, we have our three Kubefox pods. We have the broker, the HTTP server, and the NAT server. And then we have our application pods. We have the, the front end and the back end. Get that back at the top. Let's sub submit our first request. Now, here in the quick start, this is our first request. The only way that this differs is that we add KF another query parameter, KF sample equal true, which tells Kubefox that we want to trace that this request. Um, what you see here is that we're telling Kubefox dynamically that we want the request routed to the Hello World main deployment in the QA virtual environment, and then we want tracing active. Remember for QA, the who variable was defined as world, and that's why uh, what's happening is that the front end component is pulling that value from the environment and saying, hello world. So if we do the same thing for prod, we should get hello universe. And we do. Let's jump over and take a look at Jaeger. It takes a, a minute, by the way. I was just looking at my notes. Um, so it doesn't take quite as long. It's just the uh, narrator that's having the problem. And what we see is that 
uh, we have span based telemetry uh, for each of our requests that we just submitted. OK, so we have the request that we submitted to our Hello World main deployment in the prod virtual environment. And the same thing for the QA virtual environment. We can go back and do a publish and a release for our components. The release uh, relieves us of the need to supply context via query parameters on the URL. We can have one release per app per virtual environment. When we do a release, Qfox will inject context into the request so that we don't need to specify the KF depth deployment query parameter, the KFVE query query parameter. We do need to add the KF sample equal true query parameter. It's not included in context at this point. We'll go ahead and, and do that request. And we get hello world. We didn't tell it again what the uh, context was because we did the release. Let's do an update. Well, let's take a look at the, the pods first. Just so you can see that we still only have two application pods running. Um, we have access to, to both uh, deployments, but just two pods running. Let's do an update of our front end component and commit and publish it. So we're going to go in here and we're going to modify hello. So this is where we're going out and grabbing the who environment variable um, and injecting it into this message. As percent s, by the way. So. Um, we'll go ahead and save that. Go back. And now we're going to commit and republish. Remember I mentioned before that um, you're going to see the skipping, but you're going to see the actual building uh when we modify the front end so we're skipping the back end again because that container already exists but the component image for the front end does not exist because we just made a modification now If we rerun our curl requests, we're going to run a number of them here. We're going to see something interesting. The request to our V1 release, either without deployment specified for QA because we released, that's the first request that you see, or with the V1 deployment specified with KF depth for prod, see that here. So that's our new, that's our uh, actually released version of the code. And remember, the released version is the default version for QA. So we got our original code. We get hello world and we get hello universe. For both of our new main deployments, we get hey instead of hello because those requests are being routed to the new version of the front end. So here we're specifying we want the main deployment for both QA and prod. 
and we get Hey World and Hey Universe. We're going to go take a look at Jaeger again. But before we do that, I want you to see what's actually running. What's actually running is only one additional pod, and that's the new version of the front end. That's possible because QFOX dynamically routes at runtime. With QFOX, only a single backend pod is required, even though there are multiple versions of the application running. QFOX dynamically shapes traffic at runtime and will route the request to the correct version of each component for that version of the app, depending on context. Let's take a look at Jaeger again. Refresh just to make sure. If we take a look at this latest front end component, we see there's only two traces for that component because it's only these last two requests for Hey World and Hey Universe. Um, for Hey World and Hey Universe that uh, were accessed. So we're accessing the latest version of the front end component in here. If we look at the other component, we see all the traces that we've run up to that point. That have accessed that particular component. Here's our V1 access. And this is the the access when we're accessing the, the V1 release in QA, but we don't have, spe have to specify the deployment um, because it was released. We take a look at the back end. We're going to see everything. We're going to see the V1 requests, and we're going to see the Hello World main requests. We're going to see everything because back end is common to each one of these things. Now we're going to be uh, and we have the ability to segregate these things uh, by version. So we see we have the traces for the additional component. We'll kind of lock it up there. Remember, we didn't have to do anything to get these traces. So. We got all the span based information that we want. And we got it without actually specifying anything without configuring any product. We got it by virtue of the fact that we built the product and deployed it with KubeFox. So with KubeFox, Developers can make changes to the application, and when they're ready, they can publish the app. They don't need to configure a CI CD to do so. This is important to emphasize. Developers are largely removed from CI CD logistics. They don't need to worry about or manage deployments for individual components. KubeFox handles this for them. KubeFox, not teams or developers, evaluates the repo and determines what has changed then containerizes and distills the deployment to only changed or new components. Developers always interact with KubeFox at an application level. Teams and developers can deploy multiple versions of the application, and those versions can coexist side by side with prior versions, as you just saw. And developers can make changes and test those changes against pr the prior version of the app. And they can do so without DevOps, without wiring things together, and without additional configuration. All the while, KubeFox helps control provisioning, as you saw during the quick start, by distilling deployments to only those components that are new or which have changed. Developer A can layer on a virtual environment that activates different components and different versions of components and do so dynamically, simply by, simply by specifying query parameters. 
One reason why Kubefox can achieve this is because Kubefox routes dynamically at runtime. This is a key factor. Requests are evaluated each component to component transition and routed to the correct version of a component for that version of the application. Telemetry is available by component, application, or across the cluster. So thank you for spending some time today. A continuing mission at ZigZog is to simplify Kubernetes for developers. If, hypothetically, engineers could focus on application development and much less so on supporting infrastructure, for example, Zero Trust, which is also part of Kubefox, telemetry, versioning, CICD, and provisioning, then we think that better applications would result. For that to occur, the facilities we just discussed would need to be provided as a consequence of the development ecosystem. And that's what Kubefox is all about. I'd like to mention that we're very interested in your feedback and welcome your participation in our journey. We're still in the getting started phase, so it's a good time to check us out. A great way to get started is through the quick start. We have instructions for a reserve, but it can be run in any Kubernetes cluster anywhere. You can see links for the Kubefox repo and quick start here at the left, as well as a general email address for ZigZog, and finally direct email addresses for John and for me. I hope this piques your interest and you have, and you decide to check out Kubefox. We welcome you to do so, and we invite your thoughts and feedback and criticisms, by the way. Thank you for spending some time with us.